So this is my uh, first time here. <laughs> I hadn't uh, been aware of it until I talked to Grant at the um, JavaScript um, conference. Um, basically, he was doing something similar to what I was doing, which was making puzzle games and SVGs. And I thought, that's that's perfect. I'm going to talk to him afterwards. And, and then he said, do I want to talk about it? And I thought, perfect. I love talking about stuff that I'm doing. Um, so that's me, uh, David Thompson. I'm on Twitter at Lotographia. Um, which is also the name of the website. It roughly means study of lotuses. It's a word I made up. Um, sort of, um, how many? Five or six years ago, studied um, computer science at Vic Uni. Um, currently working at Spotlight Reporting in Pitoni. Um, and a general lover of puzzles and puzzle games. Um, and because I've never been to one of these events before, I don't really know how these are supposed to go. So I'm just going with what I. Uh, what I wanted to do. <laughs> um, so here's my 1980s Whanganui kid starter pack. Is anyone familiar with this computer here? You got one. Excellent. Yeah. What? <laughs> Excellent. Um, yeah. So for some reason, a lot of kids in Whanganui had um, Amigas instead of Nintendos and Segas. So this was my my childhood. Um, these were the games I grew up with. Bubble Bobble, Lemmings, Monkey Island, and Gianna Sisters, which I learned later as a ripoff of um, Super Mario, which I didn't know at the time. Um, but basically, having this childhood, I decided I wanted to make um, games. Um, then in the mid 90s, games started looking a bit more like this um, Doom, which is less, I sort of lost interest because I, I don't really, you know, these were sort of twee, fun bright and colourful games, and then they got kind of dark and 3D and stuff, and I don't really care for dark 3D stuff. <laughs> so I moved away from wanting to make games to wanting to write books, and those are the, some of the authors I was reading at the time. Um, so for a long time I wasn't interested in making games, and then in the sort of mid-2010s when I was studying, um, this one is, I can't even remember the name of it, but um, Stardew Valley, Stardew Valley um, which I learned was made by just one person. And it's all bright and colourful again. And I thought, wow, we've come around full circle to the point where um, it's easy for one person to make a game on their own and they don't have to be 3D monsters and stuff. <laughs> um, so I got into, um, yeah, sort of got empowered to try to make some games again. And um, yeah, so I've made my, <laughs> um, my Lotographia website, which has a couple of sort of creative writing games I started with because I. Yeah, like I showed you, I wanted to be a writer for a while, so I wanted to make creative writing games, and I thought, I want to make something a bit different. And my first idea was like, SimCity, but that's a picture of the Carterton City Council or something. Um, I wanted a, like, <laughs> my first idea um, was, I enjoy SimCity games, but the whole building every road individually is a bit tedious for me. I wanted like a, an overview of a sort of a high-level city simulator. Is where I started at, so it's very far away from where I ended up, but I like the idea of you're not building every single road, you're running the town based on sort of council meetings and stuff, which probably sounds a bit boring to some people, but I would love that, you know, and someday maybe I'll make that game or play it or something. Um, and my idea was a bit complicated, it evolved over time, and eventually it was SimCity meets Tetris, which was not really that sensible, um, <laughs> but that's kind of where I was in the midpoint of this evolution of my idea. Um, and then I was evolved, um, inspired by Puzzled Pint. Is anyone familiar with this? That's a really great um, event uh, that's held second, first Tuesday of, no, second Tuesday of every month at a different pub, pub location. And basically it's a whole bunch of, like every month there's a different set of puzzles made by different people. Um, there's a variety of them. There's like word games and there's um, logic games, logic puzzles and things, so if you've got a variety of people with different skills, they're great, because you know, some, someone will come along with their ability to do anagrams, and another person can do um, yeah, um, yeah, logic, spotting patterns and stuff. Um, there's this one that came along, this was a Christmas puzzle, so this is a Christmas tree, um, and basically the idea is you've got these ornaments, stars, circles, diamonds and canes, and you've got to place them at particular locations on, on the Christmas tree, based on these um, requirements. So this is a garland, and it has to have the same type of ornament at each end. Um, can't remember what the lights meant. I mean, need a circle at one end, so you've got these requirements. And I, I really enjoyed this puzzle. And I thought, well, what if, what if these are like buildings, 
and the garlands can be highways or um, yeah, that kind of a thing. So it got me thinking in a different direction for my my puzzles, um, how my puzzle game might work. Um, and I also got inspired by Cracking the Cryptic, which you brought up um, at your talk. <laughs> um, and I sort of borrowed a wee bit from their um, application, which is, I think this is the Killer Sudoku application. Um, they do a website, um, not a website, a YouTube channel, which I got into during lockdown, which maybe I'll get into again <laughs> in a couple of days. Because um, I just turned out I really enjoyed just having some un people, people solving Sudokus and things in the background. Um, yeah, so I got into them, and so I put those two things together, and I made Toveland puzzles. Um, because I'm of Scandinavian descent, I thought I'd make it like a faux Scandinavian town name, which basically was a combination of Tove, as in Tove Jansen, and Lund, as in Billund, where Ligo was from, and I just made up Toveland puzzles. And now I'm going to do a demo. How do I exit? There we go. Do, 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 do. Um, I should have got the... Just a minute. Sorry. Sorry, not very um, polished. Um, so, um, yeah, uh, Toblin puzzles. Um, so the idea is, um, here's the first puzzle. It's an intro island. Welcome to Toblin puzzles. Um, the, pu uh, the puzzle collection that tries to answer the question, what if some city but make it Sudoku. Each puzzle has a set of requirements that need to be met for the solution to pass. These requirements can be navigated using the arrows and by selecting the navigation dots above this text. Um, proceed to the next requirement now. Um, you can, I'm just going through the first, the intro puzzle. Um, you can mark off the requirements and use you complete them um, using the check boxes on the right. When you select check solution, um, the navigation dots will be marked as completed if the requirements are met. Um, so do that now. Um, and you can also, so yeah, these two requirements have been checked off just because there are no actual requirements, they're just intro text. And you can turn on the Sudoku style markings, like um, the pencil markings, uh, like from the Killer Sudoku app that I was looking at earlier, but it's turned off by default, um, just because it's a bit confusing for people who aren't familiar with that sort of a thing. But I'll turn them on now. <coughs> so in this city, this community has um, a house, an airport, a terminal, um, and connect by a road and rail network. Um, so you select the rectangles and place the buildings. So I'm going to put a house here, a terminal here, and an airport here. So you can see it's kind of um, the parallel to Sudoku's where you've sort of got a set of, and you know, in Sudoku it's a set of nine numbers, but here it's a set of um, letters that represent building names. Um, so I place that and I um, check the solution and that solution passes. And the next one says, well, the terminal has to be at the intersection of the road and rail network. Um, so I move the terminal over here and the house over here, and I check the solution again, and here that one passes. And the final one is um, the house dislikes living next to the rail. So that's obviously not there, where there's um, some rail. So this obviously moves up here, and that airport moves down here. And ta-da, the, the solution passes. Um, so that's a very simple concept um, where you're placing some uh, destinations. Um, and the next puzzle, um, so I've got these three intro puzzles. Um, this one, the buildings have been placed already. Here's a house, here's some a park or something, some flowers. Um, here's some trees for some forest and some grasslands. And then this one, you're um, you're actually building the the the, yeah, the routes between the um, between the buildings. Um, and I'll just place them as they're supposed to go here. So you, the, clues, the clues would tell you where um, that you can't build rail in the forest, so I build them down there, and the lane connects two houses, so I have to build it here, and so on. So it's sort of, yeah, it's a, it's a different variation on that puzzle. You're not building the destinations, you're building the routes. And in the third um, puzzle, um, the destinations and the routes are already set, and now you've got to figure out where the um, the valleys and the forests go. Um, in that case, I think they all go like that on this map, if you follow all the, in the instructions. Um, so yeah, so you can combine all of these things in different ways. 
Um, this is my co complicated puzzle where everything is part of the puzzle. Um, so you've got these different sets. You've got the set of buildings. Um, there's an airport, a grocery store. I actually probably need a, a legend or something so you can tell what these are instead of me just telling you that that's an airport. Um, yeah, so yeah, so everything, every part of the island, every um, component becomes part of the um, puzzle, and I won't complete the whole thing, but um, yeah, um, yeah. So that's that's what I wanted to do with my puzzles. You can, can uh, create different constraints. Um, you can say that two buildings can't be next to each other, um, airport can't be in the mountains, or um, you, if you're following the path, you must have these uh, buildings in a sequence and that kind of a thing. So you can, there's all these different requirements that you can sort of mix and match to build um, puzzles. So that's that's the demo of where I've got so far. Um, I only have five puzzles so far, uh, but I yeah I want to keep building more of them. Um, so yeah, that's that's that. Um, ch -ch 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 -ch. Yeah. Um, and I've got some more slides about it. Yeah. Um, go back to presentation mode. So, just uh, pros and cons as I see them between you know Sudoku and Sudoku variants um, is that to me Sudoku gets a bit tedious after a while because um, it's always you know it's, it gets to a point where you're just filling in really basic logic after a point that you've done millions of times before. Um, you don't have to do the same thing, and you know you can avoid that in my games. You know every box ha is relevant to the puzzle, rather than you know you've got to got to fill in all eighty-one squares, even if you've sort of filled in enough that basically after a certain point it's just um, just a, a a chore to go through. I feel um, you can might as well just stop, so yeah, you don't have this requirement. Um, and the other thing is you can create stories behind the rules. You can say that people don't like to live next to airports or that the person likes to visit the grocery store on the way to their to the work every day, you know, so they have to be in that sequence. Um, so a little fun stories and also like graphics. Um, so, you know, you place a house and the little house will appear. You place some forests and trees will pop up. Um, so, yeah, um, a lot of fun and whimsy. Um, that you can't really put in sort of traditional Sudoku variant puzzles. Um, yeah, and, and you can combine the constraints in the, lots of different ways. Um, some of the cons um, is there is a bit of a space constraint, you know, with the grid of 9 by 9 Sudoku squares, it's very tightly packed, but if you're going to have roads between them and also areas where um, you want to say this is different regions of the map, it actually begins to cut down on, on if you, especially if you're using it on a phone, you don't want to have maps that are too complicated. So that's one of the restrictions there. Um, I found it difficult to validate there's only one potential solution, like um, Sudoku has Sudoku solvers, so, um, but my one is so, so many different kinds of, you know, um, constraints that, um, yeah, it's difficult to create an algorithm that'll, that'll, um, you know, at the moment it just brute forces, tries every combination of, <laughs> of um, options, um, which is a bit slow at times, um, not ideal, but so I'm sort of working on that over time to improve that. Um, what else? It doesn't currently support mathematical logic, but it could. There's no reason why um, I'll get to that in a moment, um, but you can also potentially have, you know, skyscrapers, for example, if you're familiar with the skyscrapers puzzle where you're looking along a path, and is anyone familiar with sort of, um, skyscraper puzzles? Just you. I'm sorry. I was told there would be more like puzzle geeks. Um, I won't go into that because I'm taking up a bit of time. But you know, you've got a it's a Sudoku grid kind of a thing where there's numbers on the side, and it'll say if you're facing this way, you can see three buildings, and all of the skyscrapers are at different heights. Um, so you've got to figure out this order of the skyscrapers. Um, um, oh yeah, and it does take a wee bit longer to design a puzzle, just because you yeah. Especially I haven't I haven't got drag and drop for designing my puzzles yet, so everything is just <laughs> figuring out the where the numbers go. Um, I'll show you the admit the puzzle designer in a moment. Yes, this is where I show you the puzzle designer. So this is one of the weak points at the moment that I need to work on. 
Um, yes, don't judge me. This was literally just, <laughs> it's terrible. It was just, I needed, you know, I thought of a button that needed it, uh, they needed to be created and I just added it to a list of buttons and have no labels or anything to explain what any of this means. And yeah, no drag and drop, like I said, everything is just X and Y coordinates. So um, yeah, so that's, that's terrible. Um, so that's on my list of things that I need to work on. Um, um, so that is reduced to this drawing. Yeah. 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 So there's different things. Like there's um, um, this is the list of clues um, that are you know that the puzzle requirements, the constraints, lists of collections. So. Um, a list of collections might be all of the roads or all of the different routes, a collection of that contains railways and avenues or a collection of buildings or a collection of um, different terrains. Um, yes, yeah, these are all the different objects and also I've got um, this terrible, terrible thing that creates the sort of the SVG, you know, outlines just to make it more, more it was originally just like lines, you know, um, boring straight lines, but I decided I wanted to add <laughs> um, curves and things. So this is the terrible, terrible um, <laughs> line tool for the SVGs. Um, yeah, so where am I? Um, so it would be potentially possible to create a traditional Sudoku with this tool. Um, you just create a collection. Um, the ones I was showing you had different Buildings and things, so a uh, you know house, uh, airport, a lighthouse, whatever. But you can just say one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. That would be your collection. Um, create a nine by nine grid. There, where each each square in the grid is using this collection. Um, each column, row, and set of three by three box. Um, set that as a group. Um, const create a constraint where either each group contains one of each number from one to nine, or each square in that group contains a unique number. So there's different ways of using the constraints to achieve the same thing. And just um, fill in some uh, starting numbers. So this is obviously unsolvable, I was in a hurry. But um, yeah, so these are the fixed numbers. And then you've got a working Sudoku that you've made um, out of out of my, my tool, if you wanted to, instead of making um, um, uh, what you call cities and things, um, and this was what I was talking about uh, skyscraper before. Um, so you would have one, two, three, four, except um, I don't know if I'm explaining it very well. Like this is the highest skyscraper would have to be here. There would be a four because this one can only see one skyscraper in that direction. If that makes sense. Yes, exactly. So there'll be one, two, and three. You can't see them behind the four. Um, but so there's you know traditional skyscraper games. But if you used my my tool, you could actually add a little bit of flair and um, variation to this game because they don't normally have roads between the skyscrapers. If you could say a create a constraint where each end of the road has to be the same um, number, for example. So. There's this possibility of just um, you know taking traditional concepts of um, these puzzle games like skyscrapers and create a new dimension to them. So yeah, um, where am I next? So some future goals is um, yeah you saw it on desktop before. It sort of looks a bit better on mobile. I want um, to what am I doing? Um, yeah, no, that's not it. Do, 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 do. Not the most efficient loader. Yeah, so it's um, it fits well on this screen, um, but on a on my laptop, the screen isn't quite big enough. Um, so I want to have them, you know, horizontally laid out on a desktop rather than vertically like this. That works a bit better on mobile. Um, I want to improve the puzzle designer so that it is less of a cluttered mess um, and add drag and drop so you can move things around more easily without just tinkering with numbers. 
Um, improve the code base, do not look at the code, it's all up on GitHub, but I didn't tell you that. It's just a, a, a big fire burning in a trash can because I just wanted to get it out. I wanted to prove the concept would work, so I just <laughs> thought of an idea and wrote the first way of implementing that idea that I could think of, so it's not, not the best. Um, um, so, um, React. Yeah, there's um yeah all the front end is in, in React so um, yeah that no no it's uh, dot net which is what I use at work so it's what I was familiar with so that's how yeah all all that does is store the and return the puzzles not very exciting um, um, yeah and one thing I would love to do at some point is um, be able to allow other people to share and design puzzles. Um, because at this point I've designed all of the puzzles. I actually want to play this game myself, so I want to make the design tool accessible to other people um, so that they can come in and design puzzles that I can play. Um, and also add other features and options. For example, there's no reason why it has to be cities. It could be like a sort of a role-playing game where you've got a set of, you know, you've got a band of a bard and two wizards and a a rogue and two warriors and you've got to figure out where they are in the map so that they can defeat the dragon or something and the constraints might be um, the bard must be defended by the wizard and the wizard must be, I don't know, the wizards, wizards have to be close to the wizard stone. I don't, I don't know role playing games. So. <laughs> I imagine there's a wizard, wizard stone at some point. Um, <laughs> So yeah, it doesn't have to be cities. You can have other concepts potentially. I'm not quite sure what other than you know Dungeons and Dragons, but I would love to see what other people might come up with of ways of um, of creating new puzzles and things. And maybe even they could have a, a story mode, so a sort of a, they could have a sequence of puzzles that you know your your characters in your Dungeons and Dragons game have to work through different levels. But it's you know, so it's basically a collection of puzzles that tell a story. I think that would be a, a fun idea. And then promote it, which is, is the worst, my, my weakness, my biggest weakness. I'm very enthusiastic about my, my ideas, and then I um, tell people on Twitter, and two people will go and look at it, and then I'll think, okay, that's enough. That's enough marketing. I mean, if I, like, if you look, if I Google the puzzle, the first thing that, oh no, didn't work this time. But I, I googled it the other um, earlier on, and the first thing they came up with this meeting. <laughs> so, <laughs> um, so the fact that it was mentioned on the the page for this meeting it was, you know, <laughs> it was easier to find than the game itself. So that's that's where I am with marketing at the moment. Um, I think that was all I had for slides. It was. So yeah, that's my my game, and um, I may not have, I don't know. I was very enthusiastic, so that's counted for something. Um, yeah. Yeah. Any as far as the graphics go, have have you used like a a, um, a graphics tool like I use Inkscape for graphics? Ah uh, no no I, I didn't I sort of made it and I made something in that I showed you earlier it's yeah just very rough I just I just basically I wanted to make everything myself. <laughs> um, so I learned how SVGs work and the different kinds of curves and things and then I just created a tool that could, you know, you could change the curves and um, you know, change the coordinates and just make your own curves and yeah. With Inkscape, I mean it is SVG. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So you can, you can use it and then copy out the... Oh yes, the yes. The but I, s I used to do a bit of that. I did, um, I have something called... Um, it's on my computer, but this isn't my computer. And I can never remember the name. Affinity, um, one of those Affinity softwares where you can create um, graphics. And I did that for a while. I would export and then import into my software. But I actually prefer my my homemade tool where I can just save it and retrieve it directly from the database without having to sort of tinker with files and things. So, yeah, so also, you know, if someone's coming in and they want to design some graphics for their, you know, they wanted to design a wizard hat for, to represent their wizard or something. I just want the tool to be there, you know, within the software that they can go in and, and design that wizard hat. So, yeah. Yeah, it may well be um, React widgets for doing that as well. 
Uh, probably. <laughs> I, don't know. I, I just had so much fun just designing it myself. So, yeah. <laughs> Um, yeah, no, um, yeah, just SVDs strictly, yeah. Um, so basically, it'll. I've got a, I've got those JSON files that you know give the list of the all the coordinates of the different vectors and their colors and things, and then it will just create a SVG out of that, out of that file. So yeah, <laughs> yeah, um, yeah. So everything's pretty much homemade. Um, just because I, yeah, because I had fun doing that. Um, yeah. Anything else? Or? Anyone want to come and design puzzles with me? No? Oh, well, that was no marketing for this year. Um, <laughs> Thank you very much. <laughs>